Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to explain one of my favorite parts of PyTest, which is the parameterize, uh, well parameterize because it's <laughs> it's spelled a little bit creatively. Uh, but we're going to be explaining that function and how you might use it to write some tests. So let's jump into that. Alright, so first we're going to start by setting up a virtual environment and installing PyTest. So we can uh, have that ready to go. And we're going to activate both tabs, uh, but I just did pip install PyTest. And we're going to write a little test file. Oh, what should we do today? Um, let's do a silly function just to explain what's going on. Uh, we're going to make a square function which, I don't know, maybe takes some, you know, union of int and floats, or there's probably a number type somewhere, but uh, let's let's just do int to int. <laughs> That'll keep it nice and simple. And we're gonna write some tests for this function. Now, normally you would put your actual code and your tests in separate files, but for sake of discussion, it's gonna be easier to just put them all into one file. Uh, we're gonna import pytest, and we're gonna write some tests. So. Without parameterize, you might write a bunch of tests that look something like this. A test square one, or you might do assert square one equals one, and then you'd write another test, test square uh, negative one, and you'd assert square of negative one is equal to one, and you might write another test, test square two, Etc. Etc. You'd write a bunch of sort of tests like this, and, um, and of course this works. And we run those tests. They're currently failing because we didn't actually implement square. If we went to go implement square, you know, it's simple. Return n times n, and that and that works. And we run these tests, and they pass. Cool. But what if I told you you could write all of these tests without writing so much test? <laughs> Uh, and that's where parameterize comes into play. And the way you use parameterize currently, I hope in the future we can just simplify it to params or something a little bit easier to type and remember. Uh, but if you use pytest.mark.parameterize, not parameterize, parameterize, uh, you'll be able to simplify these tests into a series of table tests. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna you know delete these other tests here, and I'll show you how parameterize works. Uh, in this case, we have a series of inputs and outputs, and they they kind of show up in pairs. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna add two arguments to our test square function. Um, maybe like input x and expect it seems like a decent name here. And we're gonna adjust our square test to use input x and expected to run this test, expected, there you go. And in parameterize, we're going to match the parameter names as the first argument, so input x and expected, so that's kind of our uh, our first argument to parameterize, and then we're gonna have our table of tests. And so before, you know, we had an input x of one, so these, these match up, so the, the first tuple matches up with each of the inner tuples, and the expected is the second one. So if we square one, we expect to get one. You can see we can also make another test, you know, square negative one, and we also get one. We square two, we get four. You know, we square negative two, we get four, and et cetera, et cetera. You can imagine adding more and more tests in this fashion. But the cool thing is PyTest will automatically take all of these tests and generate a bunch of tests for us. So even though I only wrote one test, yeah, I, <laughs> one test with a, <clears throat> slightly magical decorator, but I only wrote one test, and if we run pytest, uh, tuple object is not callable. <laughs> I forgot a comma. Uh, if we run pytest, you can see that it generated four separate tests for us, and if we run it with dash v, you can see that it's given a unique name to each of these tests, and you know, by default it puts the inputs and outputs as So that's kind of the basics of parameterize. So the first argument to parameterize is the list of the parameter names, and then the next argument is a sequence of uh, parameter sets, basically the, the values that you would s sort of fold into these parameter names. Uh, now sometimes these output parameter, like automatically generated test names aren't the best. 
and you can use a cool function called pytest.param and that allows you to name these tests. So if we instead of having a tuple here uh, had a pytest.param object and it you know it's it's easy to add you just put pytest.param in the front and if you just do that I believe yeah this doesn't change anything this works the same as that but you can say id equals a uh, negative trivial case or something like that or whatever whatever you want to call this and you can see that now it has adjusted the name of the parameterized test. And so this gives you a nice easy way to document stuff or still keep, you know, a semantic test name without seeing these not so readable test names. And you could do, you know, underscores here if you want it to be like slightly easier to type out or slightly easier to target with i tests dash k. Um, dash v just to show you um but yeah that's pytest.pram now there is one special case to pytest.mark.parameterize and uh well actually let me show you something that you probably shouldn't do and with parameterize uh, and of course this is this is opinion so <laughs> you can disagree with me here but that's fine uh one one strong piece of advice that i've heard and i also tell this is that you should avoid logic in tests and uh, a thing that I see pretty often, as soon as people see parameterize, they're like, oh, well, why would I write three tests when I could just throw all of the tests into one and then parameterize based on it? And here's a common pattern that I see people do sometimes. Um, they'll, they'll attach, you know, extra arguments to a test that was already functioning to add additional behavior. So let's say we added an error parameter that we wanted to say like, if error, we want to say with pytest uh, raises type error, uh, square input x. And so what we've done here is we've added a second, or an extra parameter to this that says like, uh, do I expect this to raise an error? And so then they might go through and say, okay, well, one, one shouldn't error. So we'll set false there. These ones should all never error. Uh, but maybe we also want to add our error test cases here. So you might say like, you know, a, a squared doesn't really make any sense. Um, and so that one should raise an error. So you set true here and you, you know, probably set expected to a dummy value because it shouldn't raise. And uh, you know, what, what else would we expect to be an error? Like you know, multiplying a list or something. And this, this does work, I believe. Uh, if we get rid of dash K. Yeah, so these these tests do work despite being, you know, not, not how I would write this test. And, and this is a, a common pattern that's referred to in other types of programming as a Boolean trap. So like this, this parameter here only takes Boolean values. And so you've essentially baked some complexity into your implementation of your test and makes it harder to refactor and stuff. But also it's a lot harder to, to reason about what's going on here. You just see this giant table of like none true, empty list, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's just a lot harder to understand what's going on. Also another trap that people fall into is taking parameterize and like making it six or 10 or 20 parameters. And you just, you just have this really long list of things that are really hard to read. And I find that that's uh, kind of rough. But let's let's undo that because we don't want to do the error parameter. But let's show a better way to do that same set of error tests. Uh, we can redo that. So let's do test square error, and we're actually going to do a similar test as before, but we're going to use a different form of parameterize. So this was parameterize with multiple parameters, uh, but there's a special case with parameterize with only a single parameter input x. So instead of having a sequence of, of parameter names here, we just have a single string. And then instead of having a sequence of tuples, we just have a single sequence. Um, so we take like those examples from before, uh, these should all produce an error and, we can, you know, do the same error code here with pytest.raises type error square of input x. And now we have two separate tests that are I mean, a lot more clear, at least to me, that like these are testing error cases and these are testing success cases. And they're, they're kept separate and we still get the same like, essential 
STF outputs. Now there are some cases where PyTest can't really produce a good default name, so like lists and tuples are a good example of that. And so it will just automatically name these um, based on the parameter name and the index in the list. But anyway, that's that. Um, let me show you one other neat tip that you can sometimes do if these uh, if these tuples are harder to read, and that is you can define a name tuple for them. So from typing import named tuple, or you can use collections.name tuple if you want. And class, um, I don't know, case or something like that. And you might say input x is int and expected is an int and so you can replace these tuples with name tuples and it might make it a little bit easier to read what's going on now these names don't actually matter here uh, this is mostly just so that it's slightly easier to read what's going on there and i believe this works case takes no arguments oh right <laughs> we actually have to extend name tuple for that to work and yeah so you can see here that uh, we still ended up with the same Two com or two dash four parameter name here, but we were able to use case. I wonder, can we do this with pytest.param? Do I not need this name tuple anymore? Nope. Anyway, <laughs> uh, there's kind of a, a neat little case. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I find that parameterize is really helpful for you know making a lot of the same test case and organizing the code in a nice way. So hopefully this is helpful for your test suites as well. But thank you for watching. If you have additional things you want me to cover or see, reach out to me in the comments or on Twitter or Twitch or wherever else you can get a hold of me. But thank you all for watching and have a good one.